but the same problem could be done in a lot easier way using scalar definitions. And let's look at this one again. And I want to find the moment of this fourth about point P. Now, instead of going through R cross P, we could use the Varignan's theorem and we use these two components. So, when I say I want to find moment of this about this, I actually find moment of its own components by point P and add those two together. That will be the exact same thing as the moment of this fourth about this point. So that's one choice then we use the scalar definition which means we look we use M O as F times D. So <coughs> your first component let's say this one here that's five hundred cosine 45. So that's the magnitude of the component. Then I need the perpendicular distance between this and this. So we go and push it all the way to the end and we look at this distance. So that will be 6 and 1 as 7. So you multiply this by 7. So this is F and that is D. So that gives you the actual magnitude, but you still need the direction. So you go, you go back here and you use the transmissibility. That means instead of this force having been here, let's say if it's here. I mean, you could move it all the way across, let's say to the point here. You're keeping the same magnitude and you're keeping the same direction. Then about this point, th that was your perpendicular distance, that's your force. The tendency of this is to create a rotation in counterclockwise direction. So, I mean, about this point, this component, if this was a rigid rod, the whole thing would have rotated in counterclockwise direction. And not only that, the counterclockwise direction is identical to positive k. So, I mean, if you put your fingers along this direction, your thumb is going to point in the c direction, which is positive k. So, what I could do is, I could assign this a counterclockwise direction, which is same thing as saying that this is multiplied by um, unit vector along the axis and we take this as positive. So that's one. Then we need to do the same thing for this. So your uh, your magnitude is 500 sine 45. That's the magnitude. They need the perpendicular distance. So you bring it here and the distance you're looking for is from here all the way up to here. So for this problem, that will be 4, 6, 3, 9 meters. So you multiply this by 9. So th that gives you the magnitude of the moment of the vertical component above point P. The next thing you need to worry about is the direction. And you're going to follow the same logic about this point. That's your fourth. The tendency is to go counterclockwise. Or this whole thing rotates, goes like this. So the directional sense for that is also counterclockwise. And I took that as positive. So this also stays as positive. So at this point, the key is, like for example, this component was negative magnitude, which is the opposite to x. But that negative has nothing to do with the direction of the moment it's going to cause about point P. The direction will be decided based on the R cross F. 
or in this case it happened to be counterclockwise. So that became a positive. So these two added together will give you the moment of force F1 above point P without going through any vector manipulation. I mean all you did was took the magnitude multiplied by the perpendicular distance and then you attached an arrow to assign its direction. Now we're going to do exact same thing with this. So when you say you're going to do exact same thing, you have one component which is horizontal, then you have another component which is going in the downward direction. So we got 350 